This episode is brought to you by these grapes and nuts and all this other food. This delicious food came all the way from Afghanistan, and this video wouldn't be possible without it. If you stick to the end of the video, I'll explain why these grains were so important later. But first, we're going to fix an iPhone SE. The iPhone that I'm going to try repairing today is the iPhone SE 2020 model. As you can see, the owner's children were not very kind to the screen. The top portion near the cameras are shattered, and the bottom left corner has a large crack in it. Luckily, iPhone screens that have a home button are much easier to repair than their all-glass counterparts. Not only are these iPhones easier to repair, but the replacement screens are much cheaper. For example, this iPhone SE screen cost about $35 on Amazon, compared to the $279 you'll pay Apple for an iPhone 13 repair. To make this repair easier, I'm going to use this bona fide hardware tool set. This is totally optional, because all the tools you'll need should be included with the replacement screen. After I pop out the SIM card, I need to remove the screen from the waterproof sealant. First, I need to use a P2 pentalobe screwdriver bit to remove the two screws near the charging port. Next, I'll use a heat gun to soften the sealant. As you pry it open, be careful on the top and right side because that's where all the cables are. And when you open it, make sure to pivot on the right side of the screen. Remove any of the sticky excess sealant, then we'll need to next remove the metal plates holding down the cables. I'm going to take out the bottom plate first, and there's four screws holding it down. These screws differ in size, so make sure you have a system to organize them. You can see that the second screw was much longer than the first one. Now I'm ready to take off the plate, but I'm going to be very careful not to damage the cable. To remove the cables, find something flat like this spudger, then slide it underneath the connection and rotate it to pop it out. Disconnect both cables. Next I'm going to remove the plate holding down the cable in the top right corner. Again be very careful not to bend the screen too far back or damage the cable. As you start to take everything apart, you're going to notice that there's a lot of pieces you need to keep track of. To keep track of everything, I use a rubber mat with a magnetic head and use these boxes as each step. You can also use a piece of paper and draw boxes on it to keep track of each step. Just make sure not to bump it and mix everything up, or else you're going to have a really bad day. The screen is now separated from the motherboard, so now we need to remove the camera, backplate, and thumbprint reader. I'm going to start by taking out the backplate, and that can be done by removing the screws around the outside. These screws are extra super tiny, so make sure you don't lose them. When the screws are this small, having a magnetic mat makes it much easier. I've taken off the screws around the outside, so now I need to remove this plate covering the speaker. Now I need to take off the plate holding down the thumbprint reader. With that plate gone, I'm now going to detach the ribbon cable connected to the thumbprint reader. With that detached, I can now remove the plate behind the screen. There's an adhesive on the bottom that I need to carefully remove. With that apart, I can go behind and slide the thumbprint reader through the hole. You don't have to do it now, but for some reason when I recorded this, I thought it was a good idea to put the thumb reader on the new screen at this point. I don't remember why I did this now, but you can totally do it later. To get the reader set correctly, you need to go in from the front, and then lock it in place. The thumbprint reader won't fit from the back and could crack it if you try to push it through. Thumb reader is set, so now I need to take off the loudspeaker and camera. Remove the three tiny screws, then you can pull back the camera and take out the magnetic speaker. The camera and supporting pieces are all connected as one long ribbon cable. The ribbon cables on the iPhones can be a little fragile, and so I was lucky that there was no damage or exposed wires. If your camera ribbon cable is torn, you can actually buy these separately, and they're pretty inexpensive. I'll have the camera and the screen and all the tools I used linked below. When you put this back together, you put down the ribbon cable, then the magnetic speaker, then overlay the camera across the top. I forgot to mention this earlier, but whenever you're taking apart electronics, it's always a good idea to take a picture of it first before you disassemble it. That way you'll have a reference point just in case you get lost. I've installed the camera and tightened the screws, so now I need to put the back plate and tighten three more screws. That took some time to take out the thumbprint reader and speaker, so if you want to skip those steps, you can buy a screen that already has those pre-assembled. Those pre-assembled screens do cost about $20 to $30 more, so I recommend just doing it yourself and save some money. Before I tighten down the back plate, I first need to put on the cover behind the thumbprint reader. 
These metal covers are a great design by Apple because they tightly hold down the connections and protect the ribbon cables. If I remember correctly, I think Apple has sold almost 2 billion iPhones, and when I look at all these tiny different individual parts, that's a pretty incredible work of human engineering. I believe that I have everything tightened down correctly, so I'm going to double check to make sure that I'm not missing any screws, because I can't emphasize enough how tiny these screws are. The new screen is ready to go, but before I put it on, I need to remove all the old sealant. This stuff is pretty sticky and kind of difficult to work with because it attracts so much dirt and gunk. Thoroughly go around the outside and try to remove as much as possible. And also don't tip over your camera. I removed all the sealant, so now I'm going to put a new layer on around the outside of the phone. This is pretty difficult to put on, but push around the outside and the sealant will go on the edge, then slowly remove the blue film and it will go on correctly. I'm now going to connect the screen and speaker to test that everything's working before I tighten it all down. The screen turned on and the touch sensor works, so it looks like everything's good to go. I'm going to double check that no connections are loose, then I'll put on the two metal plates. Plates are good, so it's time to close the screen. Kind of random, but I've always thought that sound of the screen closing is very similar to the sound that a horse makes when it eats. Pretty weird. Anyways, after you close the screen, make sure to put pressure around the outside so that it seals correctly. Before I do a final test of the phone, I'm going to make sure to put on a screen protector. The new screen protector is installed, so now I'm going to give it one more final test. Everything's looking good and it all checks out, so we're going to call this a win. As I mentioned earlier, all the tools and materials I used in this video will be linked below. Now before you close out this video, I want to explain those grapes and nuts that we started out with. As I mentioned earlier, these came all the way from Afghanistan and were given to me by a refugee family. This came about because I had previously called a local refugee center to see if I could donate some supplies. Fortunately, the community I live had already made a lot of donations, so there wasn't much need for food or clothing. Instead of donations, I asked if any of the refugee families needed help fixing things around their homes. And it turned out that one of the families needed help fixing their washer and dryer. So I recruited some help and was able to go install a new washer and dryer for this family. And while I was there, I noticed that one of their iPhones was cracked, which then led to this iPhone repair video. I'm so grateful I met this family because it made me realize that there's a lot more ways that we can give. Donating food and money is extremely valuable to these families, but they can also greatly benefit from your time and your skills. You can help them find jobs or prep for an interview, or help with financials like opening a bank account, or donate time to work on their car. Many of these refugees had to suddenly leave behind everyone they knew, so it's also a great opportunity to donate your friendship. And in return, you might get introduced to some new food, like these grapes and nuts. If you'd like to donate to some of these refugee causes, I'll have some links below. Thanks so much for giving, and have a great day.